In today's webinar, we will talk about programs, admissions, and much more. And as you can see here, I will not be alone. Here with me, there is Shane Lulam, Associate Director of Admissions for Working Professionals Programs at Fordham Gabelli School of Business. So thank you for being part of this event, and thanks to all of you. And without further ado, let's get started. Shane, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Stefania. Um, if you just give me a moment, I'm going to share my screen and then we can get started. Okay, amazing. So hopefully everybody can see my screen here. Um, so I just want to say uh, a very warm welcome. Thank you so much uh, for joining today. Um, and also a huge th a thank you to Doc City for having me as well. I'm really excited to be here and to go through our admissions workshop with you, where we we're going to be talking about understanding the application process. As Stefania said, my name is Shane Lullum. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions for the Working Professionals Programs uh, here at Gabelli School of Business. So I oversee admissions for our pre-MBA, our professional MBA, and also our executive MBA uh, program as well. So once again, thank you so much for having me. So just a little bit about what we can expect from today's session. So I'm going to give you a very brief welcome and introduction to Gabelli. So telling you a little bit more about who we are, where we are, and the programs that we have on offer. Um, majority of this session, though, we will be sort of diving into the application process. So we'll be talking more about our entry requirements, um, the suitability for the different programs that we have on offer, the application process as a whole. Um, I'll also talk about some key dates and next steps. Um, and then, as Stefania mentioned, there will be a Q&A uh, session at the end of the presentation. Um, so I, I will ask if you can leave your questions until the end, because there is a good chance that I, I will answer your questions throughout the presentation. Um, and also, just to, to let you know, during this session, I will only be able to answer general questions. I won't be able to um, answer any questions that pertain to your own personal circumstances, but I will let you know about different ways that you can follow up with the Gabelli Admissions team following this event uh, to talk in more detail um, about the programs and your personal circumstances as well. So firstly, just a little bit about our mission um, at Gabelli. So as a business school, our mission is to inspire and empower positive global change, developing students into compassionate business leaders and supporting faculty and students in the ongoing generation of new knowledge. So just a little bit about uh, where we are. Um, so as you can see there on the map, so we are located right next to the, the Lincoln Center um, in sort of the Midtown Manhattan area, right next to Central Park as well. So it is a fantastic location. You can also see sort of in the background um, here of um, my um, sort of background on, on Zoom, uh, this is our campus um, as well. Um, so you can also see there on the screen um, if that um, we've got a range of different um, sort of programs on offer as well. So we have all the different master's programs, our specialized master's programs, everything from our MS in management all, the, all the way down to our media management program. Generally, the, the specialized master's programs are designed for those who are a bit earlier on in their career. Um, a lot of our students are directly out of their undergraduate um, degree and they go straight into the master's before they launch their career. Um, but then we do have some people who have a number of years of experience on these programs as well. Um, then you can see we do offer three online MS courses as well. So, you know, if you're not based um, in New York um, or if you wanted to do something that's a bit more flexible, we do have those online options. And then for those who have a little bit more work experience, um, we have our full time MBA, our professional MBA and our executive MBA program. Uh, so depending on sort of how you want to study an MBA, we have full time and part time options. And again, these are for those who are a little bit further along in their career have some leadership and management experience um, and, you know, are looking for something that's going to help boost them in their career or maybe help them make a career switch as well. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about how the Gabelli admissions team um, evaluate applications and, um, you know, evaluate you as well. 
we really do take a holistic approach when we're um, assessing you as an applicant. Um, and this goes back to, you know, one of our values, which is Cura Personalis, um, which is a, a Jesuit principle. Um, and it's all about, you know, taking sort of the, the individual and, you know, looking at them as a whole as well and looking at sort of all different aspects of them. Um, so this is something that we really do um, take into consideration when we're assessing you um, and something that we really do look at. We, you know, receive a lot of applications from um, a lot of different people. Um, and a question that I get a lot is, you know, what are you looking for? What type of person are you looking for? Um, you know, what is the ideal perfect candidate? And to be completely honest, you know, we accept applications and, um, you know, we have people in our programs from so many different diverse backgrounds. So there's definitely not one type of student that we're looking for. But in saying that, there are some quality attributes that we do like to see in our applicants. You know, being graduate business programs, we like to see people who can demonstrate leadership or maybe sort of the, the potential to go on to leadership positions in the future. Teamwork is also a really huge part of our programs here at Gabelli. So in all of the courses, there will be group work elements. So we, we love to see people who have experience working in diverse teams. As a Jesuit uh, university and institution, you know, ethics is, is very important to us as well. And there are a lot of courses on our different masters and MBA programs that focus on doing business ethically. Obviously, uh, as a business school, we are going to be teaching you, um, you know, how to be successful business leaders. But we do go that step uh, further as well um, and sort of teach you how to do business ethically as well, how to do business, not just to profit, but also to give back to society and benefit the community around you as well. We're looking for people who can demonstrate emotional intelligence, who have good communication skills. And this is something that you can demonstrate throughout the entire application process, which I will get into um, in a little bit. We're looking for people who can demonstrate critical and analytical thinking skills as well. And just those who are very ambitious and driven and really motivated to achieve their goals as well. Okay, so a little bit more about what the admissions committee is looking for. And so these are kind of the, the key areas that we're really um, assessing um, when you submit an application and throughout the application process. So first is your academic performance. So, you know, this is our opportunity to see whether you're going to be successful on either the MBA or MS, MS program that you've applied for. So ways that we do this is we will look at your undergraduate GPA, or if you've done a master's program as well, we will look at that too. We will look at any test scores that you submit as well. So uh, for example, the GMAT or GRE. While this is not a requirement for entry onto any of our programs, some of our students do um, opt to submit these scores because it does add a little bit of weight to the application and really proves to the um, admissions committee that you do have the quantitative skills necessary um, to do the program that you're applying to. Um, so we like to see, you know, good scores there. Quantitative ability as well is something that we really do look for. There are a lot of quantitative courses on all of our MS um, programs and our MBA programs. Um, and so we will be looking at, you know, whether you did any quantitative courses as part of your um, undergraduate degree and the grades that you got in those courses as well. Um, and then any relevant work experience as well. You know, some people are working already in highly quantitative um, roles. So that's another indication to the admissions committee that you do have those quantitative skills necessary for our programs. The, the next part is the communication and interpersonal skills um, as well. Um, and there are a few different ways that we assess this throughout the application process. Um, firstly is um, any essays um, as part of the application form. So we have one required essay and one optional essay. And I'll sort of touch upon this um, a little bit more later in the presentation. But having a well-written essay um, is really important. So, you know, definitely make sure that you're proofreading. Um, you know, you've had other people check it for you. You've checked, you know, your English, your grammar, spelling, all of that. Um, because having a well-written essay is a really good indication um, to the um, admissions committee that you do have those skills needed for our programs. The, the next part is the admissions interview. Um, and so this will be with a, a member of our team. Um, and this is a really good opportunity, um, you know, to talk more about yourself, 
Um, but it's also a really great opportunity for us to um, assess your communication and interpersonal skills. And I will touch upon the, um, the admissions interview um, in a few slides as well. Um, and then any letters of recommendation that you um, submit. Um, so that's also a really good indication to the admissions um, committee. Um, next is the contribution to the Gabelli School. So we really want students on our programs that are going to get fully involved in the Gabelli community. We, you know, we want people involved in different student clubs and, you know, volunteering opportunities. Um, we want people that, yeah, are going to be part of the community, not just come to class and, and go home. So there's a few ways that we can assess this throughout the application process and, um, you know, things that we do look for um, is extracurricular activities. So during your undergraduate degree, were you part of any student clubs and organisations? Um, or maybe through your work, um, you might be involved in different sort of networks and sort of extra things outside of your your day to day. We look for anywhere that you can demonstrate teamwork and collaboration. And as I mentioned before, this is such a, a huge part of our MS and MBA programs. There's a lot of group work involved in the different courses. Um, so we really do love to see those with experience uh, in teamwork and collaboration. Um, and that's something we'll be assessing throughout the application process. Again, it's the community involvement as well. So anywhere that you can demonstrate that throughout the application process. Um, and we really want to know why Gabelli. So this is something that will be asked um, within the application form and the interview. You know, we want to see your reasons for applying to Gabelli. Um, why particularly the sort of the program and why Gabelli. So make sure you've you've done your research. Um, you know who we are and what, what we're about as well. Um, and as it says there on the screen, cultural fit is something else that we will be um, assessing as well. Next is employability. Um, so within the application form, you will be asked about your short-term and your long-term career goals. Um, and our reasoning for this is we, we want to, you know, make sure that your goals are realistic, they are obtainable. We want to make sure that the program that you're applying for is the right fit for you and is actually going to help you um, achieve your career goals. Um, so you'll be asked about that within the, the application um, so it will ask um, sort of short-term and long-term career goals in terms of what industry you're going to be target, targeting, but also the sort of types of roles and the uh, the companies that you're going to be targeting as well. So I definitely recommend being as clear and concise as possible on what these career goals are. Show that you've done your research, show that you've put a lot of thought into it um, and you know, um, you know why you're applying for this program and how it's going to help you. So some of the ways that we also um, assess your employability is, you know, we will look at any internships that you've done, any professional work experience um, that you've had as well. Um, we will look at whether you've shown career progression. So especially for the MBA programs, that's something that we really love to see that, you know, within your experience, you have, you know, been promoted or at least you've increased your, your roles and responsibilities. Um, and uh, management potential as well. So um, whether that's, you know, you're already in a management role, or you have some type of leadership and management experience, or that we can just see that you have the potential to go into a management position in the future. Um, and lastly is the, the leadership. Um, so again, we're looking for things um, like, you know, have you been a manager? Um, or, you know, do you have the potential to go into a management role in the future? Um, again, this could be uh, the career progression. So have you been promoted? For, the, for those um, interested in uh, MS programs and are kind of thinking, well, I don't have any work experience at the moment. This can also be shown by, um, you know, student leader positions in clubs and societies as part of your undergraduate degree, or maybe you've led a project um, as part of one of your undergraduate courses as well. Okay, so moving on to our entry requirements. So in terms of our academic entry requirements, we are looking for a good undergraduate degree from a recognized university. So obviously this is both within the US and outside of the US as well. For those applying to um, our MBA program, so professional work experience is a requirement. Um, so for our professional MBA, we, we'd be looking at a minimum of two years 
for our executive MBA, it's a minimum of seven years. And then for our full-time MBA, we are really looking for those who have at least sort of three to four years um, of experience. For those of you um, who are not from an English-speaking country or haven't done a degree within an English-speaking country, um, it's likely that we will need um, an English language qualification uh, from you. So we accept IELTS, TOEFL, the Pearson's academic test, um, and the Duolingo um, as well. And as I mentioned previously, the GMAT, the jury, the executive assessment are all optional. So it's not a requirement for any of our programs. As I said before, though, we do have some students who will choose um, to add these test scores to their application because it does add a little bit of weight um, and potentially they are applying for a more quantitative program and they have less of a quantitative background, whether that be your academic or professional background. So the GMAT and the GRE is just a way that you can highlight to the admissions committee that you do have those quantitative skills that are needed for the program you're applying for. Okay, so just moving on a little bit to our application requirements and also our application um, process. So you can see on the left there, the first sort of step is the application form supporting materials. So the application form is, you know, your sort of background details. As I mentioned, it will ask you questions um, about the short term and long term career goals. Um, you will also be required to uh, submit one essay as part of the application. Um, and so you will have the option of choosing one of three questions. And then there is an optional essay as well. So this is your opportunity um, just to add anything additional that you want the admissions committee to consider. So, for example, um, you know, maybe during your undergraduate degree, um, you didn't get a really high GPA or maybe some of the courses that you studied, you got a lower grade um, than you were hoping for. So that's your opportunity just to explain that um, to the admissions committee. Um, so your supporting materials will be your official transcripts. So for the, um, the application um, form itself, um, just scan copies um, of your degree documents is absolutely fine. Um, if you were to receive an offer from us, um, at that point, we would need to verify your um, official degree. So that could either be in the form of um, an evaluation such as the WES evaluation for those who have international degrees, or if you're from the US, um, we can um, accept your transcript directly from your institution, whether that be posting that to us, or if there's some type of online verification system, we can use that as well. Um, and then you'll also be required to um, upload a copy of your resume. So following um, your application form, that's when our um, admissions team will have a look at your application. Um, the next step would be an admissions interview. So all of our MBA programs, um, admissions interviews are required. Then for some of our MS programs, it is possible that the um, interview can be waived, um, especially if the um, admissions officer feels that they have all the required information that they need from your application form. Um, potentially, we can waive the interview there. Following your interview, um, that's when our admissions committee will review your application as a whole. So your application, your supporting documents, any letters of recommendation, your interview, we take all of that into consideration um, and then we make a decision. Um, and then following that, you'll be notified of that decision. Um, as I mentioned before, you can see there on the side, GMAT, GRE, executive assessment um, is optional. Um, you may be required, depending on your background, to upload your English language test to the application as well. Um, in terms of the recommendation letters, um, again, this is optional. It's a really great opportunity to sort of, you know, give the admissions committee a little bit more information um, about you from somebody else. Um, so I definitely do recommend it, but it is completely up to you. They are optional. For those applying um, to our MBA programs, um, we would need professional um, recommendations. For those applying to the MS um, programs, um, if you're straight out of undergraduate, an academic recommendation is fine. Or if you do have some internships or some work experience, then um, you're more than welcome to submit a professional um, recommendation letter as well.
Okay, so as I mentioned, um, essays um, are a part of our application process. So as I said, we have one required essay and then the option to um, an optional um, essay as well. As I said, there are three different questions that you can choose from to write your essay about. So my advice is really sort of read the question, understand the question um, and answer that question as well. You know, we do often see um, sort of these uh, essays, um, you know, the applicant will just sort of, you know, tell us different things and not actually answer the question. Um, so, yeah, make sure that you've read the question and you're, you're specifically answering that as well. Um, make sure it's well structured. Um, you know, check your your grammar, your spelling, um, the style, the tone. As I said before, it's a really great idea to have somebody else proofread it before you submit it as well, um, just to make sure that you're not missing anything. Um, another common mistake that we see um, as well, um, are sort of people just kind of copying, pasting essays um, from different applications to, to different programs and different schools. We fully understand that you are probably applying to more than one program, but I definitely recommend, you know, tailoring your essay to suit that business school to really show that you've done your research. You've, you've put a lot of thought into why you want to apply to that school and to that program. So make sure that you are tailoring it and um, make sure that you're not refer referencing any other business school within the essay. Um, I know that might sound a little bit silly, but that is actually um, something that we do see quite often. Um, you know, you can be creative within the essays as well. Um, and again, show that you've done your research. So in terms of your career goals, I mean, I have touched upon this um, already in this presentation, um, but definitely before you apply, really think about, you know, your career goals um, and how the program that you're applying for is going to help you achieve them. You know, we want to make sure that the program is the right fit for you and is really going to be able to help you achieve those career goals as well. So really put a lot of thought into it beforehand. Obviously applying for an MS or an MBA is a huge commitment, um, both time-wise and financially. Um, we wanna make sure that you're, you're getting the best return on investment as well. So as I said, the form will ask you for your short-term and long-term target industry. So there is a drop-down list that you can choose from to tell us what um, industry you're going to be targeting. Um, and then we also want to know your short-term and long-term role and organisation. So then there'll be an opportunity for you to expand a little bit more within the application form. Um, tell us the types of roles that you're going to be targeting and what organisations that you're interested in as well. Um, as I said before, we really do recommend putting, you know, a lot of thought and a lot of research into this and being very, very specific. Um, okay, so your resume or your CV. Make sure it has up-to-date information. Um, again, I know that might sound a little bit silly, but it is a, a common mistake that we see where people are um, uploading um, out-of-date uh, resumes or CVs. So make sure it is um, up to date. We do request that it be no more than one to two pages um, in length. Um, make sure it's clear, simple, easy to read. Um, again, you can have somebody proofread this for you before submitting it. Um, we also do um, have some templates available as well. So you can definitely get in touch with us if you um, would like us to send you the template, just so then you have an idea of um, the style of resume or CV that we're looking for, because I know this definitely does uh, differ between countries. So if you're you're wanting something that um, you know that you know we're looking for and it's in the the US style, definitely get in touch and we can give that to you. Make sure you quantify your achievements um, as well. So for example, if you're leading a team, you know how many members are within that team. If you're managing a budget, how big is that budget? If you increased sales in your current company, um, you know, by how much, you know, revenue percentage, just anywhere that you can get those numbers into your resume will be really helpful. Um, and make sure you highlight the quality attributes that we look for. So I've kind of spoken about it within this presentation of, of what we're looking for. So really make sure you tailor your resume and your, your CV um, to sort of suit what we're looking for as well. Um, I think this is, you know, similar 
to when you're applying for jobs, you know, having those sort of keywords um, that people can sort of pick out of your, your resume will be really helpful when we're reviewing. Um, and also include things that you do outside of work or school. So, you know, we want to know a little bit more about you other than, you know, just what you study or, or what you do um, for work. So definitely, you know, tell us about um, any extracurricular activities that you do, any student clubs and organizations that you're a part of, any volunteering work that you do, any sport or hobbies. Um, definitely do add that to your resume because going back to what I said before, we are looking at you as a whole person. So we want to get to know you as a whole. And then, as I mentioned, there'll be an admissions interview. Um, for most of our applicants, as I said, sometimes we can waive that component for some um, of our applicants to our MS programs. But really, the admissions interview is an opportunity for us to get to know you a little bit better. You know, we want to um, know a little bit more about your, your motivations. As I said before, you know, why Gabelli? why the program that you're applying for as well. So it's just an opportunity for us to, to know these details. Definitely prepare like it is a job interview. Um, so there will be some questions around, you know, why Gabelli, why the program, so you can prepare for that. There'll be some questions on your career goals, so you can prepare for that. Other than that, prepare for a job interview. So start to think about some um, clear examples um, of, you know, maybe something from your undergraduate degree, like a time that you led a project, um, maybe some examples from work experience that focus on teamwork, collaboration, um, leadership and management, things like that, and have some examples that you can tell the person that's interviewing you. Um, so yeah, as I said, it's going to be a mix of questions. So we really are trying to assess your interest, your experience, your behavior, your maturity, your interpersonal skills, as I touched on before, um, and also your competence. Um, you know, we, we want to know that this program um, is the right fit for you, but also that you do have the ability to be successful on the program as well. We're also um, looking for confidence and self-awareness. Um, and again, that that overall fit for the, the program and Scabelli as well. So typically the admissions interview will last 25 to 30 minutes. It will be with um, either one of our current students or somebody from our admissions team. Um, it is on Zoom, but for those who are maybe within New York or the tri-state area, there is an opportunity if you wanted to, um, to request that in person. So next is, you know, how do you differentiate yourself? So as I said before, you know, we are approaching this from a holistic point of view. We want to get to know you as a whole person. So tell us your story. You know, we really do want to get to know you. We want you to tell us about yourself. We don't want you to just tell us what you think that we want to hear. Um, so there are so many opportunities, as I mentioned, throughout the application process, um, especially the the essays as well, to really go into a bit more depth and, and tell us your story, tell us your background. Um, and again, the admissions interview is a really great opportunity to do that as well. So just to let you know about some of our upcoming uh, deadlines for those of you who might be interested in applying for fall 2024. So our next round deadline, um, which will be our round two deadline, is coming up on March 22nd. Um, and just to highlight here for our international students, this would be the deadline for those who are not currently in the US and who need a student visa. So if that is you, um, you definitely will need to get your application in by the March 22nd deadline. Um, of course, earlier the better. Um, you know, it is a long process um, to get that student visa and then, you know, also uh, preparing to, you know, move here as well. So we definitely do recommend applying as early as possible. Um, then we have our round three deadline, which is May 3rd. We have our round four deadline, which is June 7th. Um, and this is a deadline for both domestic students and international students who are already within the US um, and already have an active um, student visa. And then we have round five, which is rolling admissions. Um, but actually, this is just for those who are applying for our professional and executive MBA programs as well. So um, anyone applying for full time MBA or any of our MS um, programs, as I said, we definitely do recommend earlier applications. 
So I also just wanted to let you know about some um, upcoming events that we have um, as well. So on Tuesday, February 27th, we have our Building an Inclusive Business World Summit. This is a virtual event. It will go from 9 a.m. to 1.15. Um, that's New York time. And then we also have um, program-specific information sessions um, coming up um, as well. So these will be the weeks commencing March 4th and March 11th. Um, so depending on what program that you're interested in, there will be an information session that you can sign up for and attend just to know more specific details about that particular program. For those of you who might be based in New York or at least the tri-state area, we do have some upcoming in-person events as well. So we have our winter open house, which will be on Saturday, March 9th. And then also as part of the winter open house, we're offering um, candidates to like request a spot on our on the spot admissions day as well. So that's really for those who are at the point of, you know, you're ready to apply and you know what program you want to apply for. So you have the opportunity to come and interview on the day at the winter open house and also get your decision on that day as well. And then finally, just a little bit about some of our next steps. Um, so definitely have a look at our website. We have a ton of information on our website on all of our programs and the admissions process. Um, and you can also look at the brochures there as well. Um, I definitely do recommend scheduling a one-on-one -on -one admissions counselling session. So we offer these for all of our programs. They are program specific. So you can talk to an admissions officer and get a little bit more information on the particular program that you're interested in. Um, but also find out a little bit more about the admissions process um, and also your suitability for the program. Definitely chat to our student ambassadors um, as well. So, you know, I can tell you so much about the programs and the, um, the application process, but having not done the programs myself, um, I can't give you that student insight and perspective. So you're able to chat to our student ambassadors on our website. Um, so we use a platform called Unibuddy. So you can reach out directly um, on that platform um, and ask any questions that you have to our student ambassadors. You will be able to see their profile, so a bit about their background, but also which program they're studying as well. So you can reach out to those who are studying the program that you're interested in. You can also connect with us on our social media channels. So we're across all social media platforms. Um, and then if you do have any follow-up questions, we've got the admissions um, email address there. So please do get in touch. We are very, very happy to answer any questions that you have. And speaking of questions, that is the end of my presentation. Um, so I'm very happy to, to go through now and try to answer as many questions as possible. Okay, so thank you so much, Shane. I saw that here we receive a lot of questions. So let's Amazing. get started. The first one is, is it long, the process for the admission? How many weeks it takes usually? Yeah, that, that is a great question. So I'm just going to go back, try to go back on, because I've got some dates. So you can see there we've got the decision date. So if say for you apply in round two, um, the admissions team will sort of start to assess your application fairly quickly. Um, as I mentioned before, the next stage would be the um, the interview. So usually within um, a few weeks of you applying, you will be then invited to schedule an interview. Um, and then usually following the interview, you will be notified within a few weeks after that as well. So even though, you know, the deadline's March 22nd, the team would review your application before then. And even though the decision is May 3rd, that's just the absolute latest that you would hear back um, regarding the outcome of your application if you applied by round two. Um, so it does definitely sort of, um, you know, differ. We don't sort of have like a, a set timeline, um, but it is usually sort of within around six weeks. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Then uh, we can continue with the CV part. Um, for example, we have a question that is, do I have to put my picture, my photo in the CV? Um, no, so that that is not a requirement um, for US resumes or CVs. Um, so I know definitely in, in different countries and a lot of European countries, that is the norm. Um, but no, that, that is not normal for, for the US. So that's not something that you need to include. Okay, thank you. This is really interesting for our students, I guess. 
Another one is um, can be useful to highlight that I am a professional athlete in the interview or resume. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. That is definitely something that you can, um, you know, mention in your resume and talk about in the um, the interview as well. As I said, going, you know, we are really looking at you from sort of a holistic approach. We want to know all about you as well. So all those extra things, you know, outside of what you've studied and, and where you work, we definitely want to know those as well. So I, I recommend including that. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, I remind to all of you that we still have time for questions. So if you have any doubt or if you want to ask something to Shane, just pop up the questions in the chat or in the Q&A box. Then the next question uh, is really interesting. Um, is asking, how is working for minorities? Do you have to tell the committee my background as a minority? So that is a that is a question within the um the application form. Yes. Okay, thank you. And then we have more specific questions. So for example, they are asking if you offer courses to improve English. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that one, but I can definitely find out for you if you wanted to follow up with me um, after this. Okay, perfect. And uh, then after this, they are asking about scholarships. So, for example, how can I apply for a scholarship? Yeah, so we offer scholarships for all of our programs. So for our MS programs, we offer scholarships up to $30,000. For our full-time MBA, we offer up to full tuition fee scholarships. And then for our professional MBA and our executive MBA, we offer up to 35000 So there's nothing additional that you need to do to apply for scholarships. There is a sort of tick box um, within the application form that you can just check to say, yes, I would like to be assessed for scholarships. And then that's something that the admissions committee will automatically do. So if we were to extend an offer um, for your program of interest, you would know at the time of offer whether you receive a scholarship and, and how much the scholarship is. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And related to these, they are also asking if you offer accommodation or you have a specific scholarship for it. So we don't have a specific scholarship for accommodation. So the, the scholarship that we um, award would be applied to your tuition bill. In terms of accommodation, we do have accommodation that's right by campus um, and that is specifically for graduate students. So yes, there is accommodation very close to campus. Okay, really nice. And then we have uh, two questions uh, about New York. Um, so mm -hmm. the first one is more generic and is asking, do you think the life there is really expensive? And do you offer some part-time jobs while studying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, as you know, and I'm sure you do because you're asking these questions. I mean, New York is an expensive uh, city. Um, you know, that is why we do offer sort of scholarships to help offset the tuition, because we understand our students, especially our international students, um, you know, are, you know, making a really big move to come to New York City um, and study here. Um, so in terms of the the part time jobs. So there is um, sort of within the like student visa requirements, um, there are, I guess, some limitations to, to what you can do. Um, but you will be, um, I guess, allowed to work um, on campus part time while studying. And we do offer graduate assistantships as well for full time students. So you can apply for these graduate assistants um, positions. So this could be, you know, even in our graduate admissions office, it could be in our marketing department, it could be in our dean's office. Um, and so that is where you will work um, part time each week. Um, and, you know, in sort of reward for that, you will then have your tuition um, decreased slightly, depending on how many hours um, you work per week. Okay, thank you. And related to this, uh, um, maybe you can tell a bit to the students, how is your experience to live in New York? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm actually fairly new to New York myself. I've been here coming up to eight months. Um, and I absolutely love New York. Um, it's, you know, such a vibrant city. It's such a diverse city as well. And I think that's really important, especially for our international students as well, because you are coming to a city where, you know, there's so many different cuisines offered. You'll be able to meet people with sort of similar backgrounds to yourself if you want to. 
Um, there's always something to see and do, always something on, which is something that I really do love about New York as well. You will never, ever get bored in New York. And I think also kind of from, you know, the perspective of, you know, coming to study a graduate business program, you know, you are located in a city where all of the top companies have offices or headquarters. So you are on the doorstep to so many different industries and companies. So I think the networking opportunities are really great within New York. And it's also a lot easier because they're right there. We have the um, careers team at Gabelli who organize a lot of events with different companies who will come and do career fairs or presentations or coffee chats with students. We have industry specific student clubs as well who will organize events with representatives from different clubs, um, from different companies in different industries um, as well. But then also like outside of that, there's so many um, more networking opportunities that you can choose to be a part of, of as well. Thank you so much for sharing your experience, Shane. Uh, in the meantime, we got two more questions. <laughs> One is, uh, do you also offer internships? So some of our programs, um, so for example, our full-time MBA, there is an internship um, component in that because it is a two-year program. So we do have our students will then do an internship between the first year um, and the second year. Any internships that you decide to apply for, there is a lot of support from the, um, the careers team to sort of help you apply for those and go through the process, um, but they aren't sort of guaranteed, just sort of keep that in mind. Okay, perfect. And also they are asking if you have partnership with some big companies. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we, yeah, we have a lot of different companies, as I said before, coming to campus with the aim of recruiting our students, both for full-time positions and also internships as well. Um, so we have a lot of companies who will come for the career fairs, the company presentations, coffee chats, um, and things like that. Um, if you wanted to get in touch, if there was like a particular company that you're interested in, um, I can definitely let you know um, about, you know, whether they actively recruit on our campus. But also, as I said before, you know, being in New York, you have access to so many different companies uh, from so many different industries. So, it, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a company that is actually, you know, coming to campus to, to recruit students. Um, you have access to, you know, any company that you're interested in. Our careers team as well are also really great um, at connecting students with representatives from companies that you're interested in. So we, we have a really large alumni network. Most of our students following graduation will choose to stay and work in New York. So we have a, a very large alumni network. So if there is an alum who is working at a company that you're interested in, our team can help make that introduction as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, one more question. Uh, Paul is asking, I would like to know if the university is private or public. Yes, so Fordham um, itself is a private university. Okay, so I guess that for now we're done with the questions. So thanks again to our panelists uh, and also to all of you to be with us today and to be to have been so curious and responsive with all your questions so I hope you learned a lot about uh, the Gabelli School of Business and that this webinar helped you to discover this university I'd like to remind you that also you can contact Shane in the email that I'm just writing to you in the chat uh, so if you have any questions, you can directly contact here in this email. And also, if you are interested in receiving your certificate of attendance, you can click in the link that I'm sending right now. And um, last but not least, uh, keep in mind that we will share the recording with you in the following days. So please keep an eye on your email. And now I wanted to ask to our panelists if you want to leave a final message before saying goodbye to our students. Yeah, no, I, I just wanted to say thank you so much for um, for joining us today. Um, hopefully you learned a little bit more about Gabelli and our admissions process. Um, as Stefania said, I'm very, very happy um, if anybody wants to reach out via my email that she shared. Um, but yeah, please do. If you have any follow up questions, um, I would be happy to answer those for you.
So thanks a lot, Shane. It was a pleasure for me to host this webinar. And thanks again, everyone. I hope to see you in the next webinar. So it was a pleasure. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. Bye, everyone. Thank you.